Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Proto and today we're going to be taking a look at the best $500 PC for gaming, video editing and live streaming. Now this PC would be ideal if you're planning to do more than just gaming and maybe you want to start a YouTube channel. I've also made it so it has tons of upgradability and yeah, compared to my other $500 rig, which marked up in price really quickly, I won't be including rebates, but if you do, you can still save a bit. Anyway, kicking things off with the CPU, you've got the Intel Core i3-4170 3.7GHz dual-core processor, costing us $108. Now, the reason we chose this over AMD is because at this price range, we're getting better in-game performance than 6300, and in terms of this versus the Pentium, because they both have two actual cores, the i3 actually has hyper-threading, which in other words means that it has four threads, which is actually the same as four cores. And so in multitasking, such as rendering, video editing, live streaming, and this sort of stuff, it'll do much better. But since it isn't a K version, it is locked to 3.7 GHz and can't be overclocked, that isn't a bad speed at all. And then you have the other supported technologies like Intel QuickSync. This basically uses the integrated graphics which we aren't using to do some processing and number crunching so that if you're live streaming from OBS, this will reduce the CPU usage. All in all, this is a great budget CPU and whilst it does have two cores, it has hyper threading to get those four threads. Now for this specific build, since the CPU can't be overclocked, we're not going to be including an aftermarket cooler since this one already comes with stock cooler. So anyway, for the MOBA, we've got the MSI Z97 PCMate ATX LG1150 motherboard. And I can see the comments now. What's the point in spending the extra on a Z97 MOBA if the chip doesn't support overclocking? And that's because when I was looking for MOBOs, there weren't ones that are really good, but relatively cheaper. Plus, this means that if you plan on getting an upgrade in the future to another Haswell chip like the i5-4690K or the i7-4790K, you can do that and still overclock. If you don't plan to overclock future chips, then look at the Azdoc H97M Anniversary MOBA which is pretty much the same besides featuring no overclocking ability, a smaller form factor, and a RAM speed limit of 1600MHz. With all that going with this MOBA, you'll only save about $13, so you can see why the Z97 one is still a good buy. So for the MSI model, it is a regular ATX size board, so it's really easy for first timers and also supports RAID configurations. Unfortunately, it doesn't support SLI, that's not a biggie, and maximum supported memory is 32 gigs, at pretty much all speeds. Now for $81 you can't really find a better deal than this and it also supports 6 60 per second SATA ports so you can hook up up to 6 drives just purely off of SATA. It also includes a standard now which is USB 3.0 headers. Since this is a Z97 board it also allows you to easily overclock if that's your thing though you won't be getting that on this CPU, that's only for something perhaps in the future. But again this is a great budget oriented MOBO sat with features and the extra PCIe slots can be used for other things like additional sound cards, PCIe capture cards. USB ports, etc. Now for a round we went with the G-Skill Aries Series 8GB, 2x4GB DDR3, 2400 memory because it's one of the cheapest 8GB modules at the moment. And its speed is great as well. So it does cost $30 and you're going to be getting a hell of a deal for this. And for the future, if this price does end up going up by quite a bit, look into changing this for another 2x4GB module at DDR3 with speeds of something like 1866MHz. Speed of the RAM for this build will make that much of a difference since we're not using integrated graphics, thank god. So yeah, this kit is great for the money and fits in with our black and blue theme. Now for storage, I want the Western Digital Caviar Blue 1TB 3.5-inch 7200 RPM internal hard drive. Now this hard drive is $50 and comes with a terabyte of storage, which for most people will be enough for your games, programs and general files. You guys know this by now, but you do have the option to add in more storage or migrate your OS onto an SSD later on. For the GPU, you've got the EVGA GeForce GTX 950 2GB Superclock video card, costing us $151. Now that it has 2GB of GDDR5 memory, you don't really want to try anything more than 1080p gaming, but that's what this card's really targeted at. It has a core clock of 1.15GHz, but then again, because this is Maxwell, you can easily get around 1.5GHz, which will boost your FPS by quite a bit. It has SLI, but we can't utilise that because of the MOBO, and features 1 DVI-D, 1 HDMI, and 3 DisplayPort connections for multi-monitor setups. Now with this card, you won't be maxing out games at 1080p, but that's really not the point. In this case, we can use our GPU for CUDA to speed up renders, game in decent settings to still get 60fps, live stream selected games through Shadowplay, and record as well games through Shadowplay, and just to a ton of other stuff. Now this is a great card if you haven't guessed yet, and then because this is NVIDIA, you do have access to CUDA, G-Sync, GPU Boost 2.0, and a lot more technologies. If you do end up finding the R9 280X or the GTX 960 for a little more, then go with that, but I wasn't able to. Next, for the case, we've got the NZXT Source 210 Elite Black ATX Mid Tower case. Not much to say about this since it is an updated version of Source 210 and features front panel USB 3.0 ports. It is a mid tower and costs $44, and the colour of this is black so it'll fit in nicely with people's setups and has three 5.25 inch bays and eight internal 3.5 inch bays for storage. 
and it does use a tool system as well and comes with two built-in fans. Build quality of this case is good and cable management is great too apparently. And lastly we've got the power supply, now I've chosen to go with the EVGA 500W A Plus Certified ATX Power Supply. Now this does cost $38 but it's maybe one of the leading PSU manufacturers and because of this 500 watts is more than enough since our system only uses about 250 which will be enough even if you want to add in a ton more other stuff like storage, fan controllers etc but for the price it was cheap and we'll get the job done and finally we get onto the benchmarks now CSGO at 1080p with the settings maxed out and AA set to 8x MSAA gets an average of 163 FPS sometimes going to above that 200 FPS so yeah really good performance there and GTA 5 on Ultra at 1080p with the VRAM completely maxed out which isn't great, gets a playable 49 FPS of stock, and overclock, this will go up to 54 FPS. Now, League of Legends completely maxed out at 1080p, gets an average of 234 FPS, so definitely look into downscaling from 1440p or 4K. And Minecraft, maxed out settings again, gets around 96 FPS at 1080p when the GPU is at stock. Battlefield 4 on Ultra at 1080p with 2 times MCA, gets around 63 FPS stock, and 67 FPS when overclocked. Now Fallout 4 on Ultra at 1080p gets an average of 52 FPS according to Digital Foundry, whereas Black Ops 3 on higher with SMEA T2X gets around 60.9 FPS to basically 61 FPS when the GPU is at stock. Again, with these benchmarks, they are just an approximation of the benchmarks I found online composing the GPU and when possible the CPU. So I don't think this is exactly what you're going to get, but it's a good rough guide. Anyway guys, that's it for my $500 editing slash game PC. This is a great build if you plan to start YouTube and want a ton of upgradeability. And I really hope you have enjoyed. If you liked this video and thought it was helpful or learned something new, then leave a like. And if you didn't, well, leave a dislike. I really appreciate all the support and hope this has helped some of you out. Anyway, subscribe for more builds like this. This has been Proto. Later.